you all um, today. Uh, it's bright and early in the morning on the west coast of the United States. Um, I think it's evening for most of you where you are. So good evening to you. Thank you so much um, to my friends at Next Genius um, for inviting me to speak to you today. Um, and it's great to see you too, Fred. Um, thank you uh, as well for sharing that information. Um, just a little bit of quick information about me. My name is Josh Fersho, and I'm from uh, Lewis and Clark College, which is in Portland, Oregon. As I mentioned, it's on the, the West Coast. Portland is um, one of the largest cities on the, the West Coast, and um, I think one of the most beautiful and best cities in the United States. Um, uh, but um, I'm going to speak with you today about um, the, the value and benefits of attending a liberal arts college. And, um, and, but I think first, before we, we talk about uh, what the value and benefits are, we even have to clarify and, and define what that even means, um, what the liberal arts are and what a liberal arts college is, or at least what we mean when we say a liberal arts college. So um, the, the higher education tradition or the university tradition in the United States um, is, is deeply rooted in, in the liberal arts. And um, when we say liberal arts, we mean um, not something about painting and drawing and and sculpture, not those types of arts. And we don't mean liberal as in like the opposite of conservative or anything related to politics. Um, what we're talking about is, is liberal in the sense of, of freedom and, uh, and liberation and this idea of being, um, it's rooted in the idea of citizenship that goes back to ancient Greece, but um, the early Americans, as you can imagine, um, uh, starting uh, democracy, we're, we're also quite fascinated by that uh, history and tradition. and. Um, and believed that that education was was critical um, for for opening your mind and and understanding how how the world worked. Um, many of the earliest institutions were also religious and, and founded by uh, by people associated with the church. So um, so there's also historically at least some um, some religious implication to that uh, as well. But um, so we mean liberal in that sense in art, literally just in the sense of of subjects and studying. Um, so. Um, so the liberal arts, um, in, in that sense, are, are subjects like, uh, like the, the sciences, mathematics, um, literature, religion, history, um, all of those, biology, chemistry, um, those are, are understood to be, be liberal arts disciplines. But um, so let's go back to the tradition in the United States. The first liberal arts college was founded in the United States in 1636. You've probably heard of um, the oldest college in the US. It's called Har Harvard College. Um, uh, later uh, began, began, or became a university. And, um, and that distinction is actually probably um, one of the more confusing ones for people to understand. Um, the terms college and university are often used interchangeably in uh, American English. And, and it's because of this, this history and, and tradition. So, um, so Harvard was established as uh, a college um, only offering the undergraduate degrees. And um, as, uh, as time progressed, uh, began um, adding other professional colleges and as did the other, the other colleges that were founded not long after Harvard. So they, they began adding things like medical schools and law schools and business schools and began to engage in professional training. But at the heart of the college is still to this day, the liberal arts college. And um, so, so when we talk about liberal arts colleges um, now, um, we often are differentiating them from places like, like Harvard, despite the fact that Harvard still is as it's, at its core a, um, a liberal arts college. So what makes the places that we call liberal arts colleges or, or LACs, sometimes people say, um, different from them? And, and what it really amounts to is that uh, the liberal arts colleges are, um, are that college, that undergraduate um, uh, college, all by itself, um, without the graduate programs, without the business school, without the law school. Um, so they focus all of their resources, all of their energy, everything they do, all their faculty are devoted to the teaching of, of undergraduates, which is what um, you all will be when you begin your, your education. So, um, so why haven't you, you heard of many of these places? You have heard of Harvard, of course. You've heard of Yale and Princeton and the oldest colleges in the US. Um, that's one of the reasons you've heard of them. It's because they're old. Many of the other universities you've heard of you um, are some of the, the newer universities in the US, the ones that were 
um, uh, founded uh, to, to educate the masses, really, and operated by the government, the state ones, the ones that are named after states, um, and the ones uh, like Lewis and Clark that maybe you haven't heard of, um, date back to the, the 1800s, many, um, and have been around for a long time. They, um, they have long histories of educating leaders in the United States, but they're small, and there are almost 1,500 of them. So it would be impossible for you to, to have heard uh, of them all necessarily yourself. Even in the US, it's quite common um, for people to not have, have heard of, of all of the, the, the really excellent colleges that exist. So, um, so again, back to this idea of attending a small uh, liberal arts college and, and the benefits of that. Um, we really believe that the college is about more than just preparing you for a career. Certainly it's critical that you have the skills necessary to, um, to begin a career and to, to function and make a living, but, but that's not the only reason that you go to college. Um, also um, in the, the 21st century, the, the careers that you're going to have are changing rapidly. Um, when I don't think of myself as terribly old, but when I was uh, an undergraduate, um, social media didn't exist. The internet was still in its relative infancy and um, oops, the lights turn off in this, this room. I just have to motion sensor, get it back on. But um, yet many people my age are working in careers, including me, that are directly related to, to both um, uh, marketing through, through social media and, and using the internet in our day-to-day -day lives. So, so clearly the skills that you need to do your job are changing over time, right? So if you were just taught how to do a job one day, um, then it's not going to be helpful for you as you continue in the future. So what is the most important things? Um, we think that, that students have to learn how to think creatively, how to be um, problem solvers, how to um, be analytical in their thinking. And, uh, and the liberal arts colleges specialize in doing just that, as well as teaching people how to communicate effectively, especially through writing, um, but through other means as well. So, um, so, so at a, a liberal arts college, um, you're going to study those traditional liberal arts disciplines. Um, as I mentioned before, the sciences, biology, chemistry, physics, computer science, environmental science. Um, depending on the college, they're going to offer a wide range of those. You're going to study um, the, the humanities, things like literature and history and religion and philosophy. You're going to study social sciences like economics, um, sociology, anthropology. Um, then you're also going to study the arts. Um, the, the fine arts, things like uh, like music and theater and dance, um, those all of those subjects make up a, a curriculum at a liberal arts college. So, so what are the advantages of going to these places? You get to study a lot of those things. Uh, typically, you don't declare your major until midway through your program. Your major is the area of study that you're specializing in. You do indeed specialize in a subject. You're going to become an expert in something, um, but that's not the only thing you're going to study. And that differentiates the American system or the liberal arts system from other um, systems in the world, that it's not merely um, studying one subject, it's studying the one subject, your major, but you're also going to take um, many elective courses or core courses that are required of you. So, um, so you get that, that broad exposure to, to many different subjects. That's a, a keen advantage. Um, another advantage, um, sometimes people imagine being small um, could be uh, a disadvantage for an institution, but it's actually the opposite. Um, because our colleges are small, that means that all of the resources we have are devoted to fewer students. So um, everything we're doing is for you, the undergraduate students. That means our classes are going to be small. You're not going to sit in lecture halls um, at a liberal arts college. You're going to be in classrooms with um, 10, 15, 20 students and a professor. Um, the professors are going to, to get to know you personally. Um, you're going to, um, also your classes are, just the fact that your classes are taught by professors at a small liberal arts college is indeed special. Um, at many larger universities, the, the undergraduate courses are taught by the graduate students, by students who are just a few years older than you and just getting their um, their PhDs at small liberal arts colleges, that typically all of the classes are taught by full professors, people who have PhDs are experts in their field, um, and in a small seminar type format. Um, another question sometimes students ponder about going to a, a liberal arts college is they know they want to go into research, they know that they, um, they want to study at a place where big ideas are being pondered and where, where new discoveries are being made. 
Um, certainly those things happen at big universities. At big universities, PhD students are engaged in that type of research. Um, they're making discoveries along with those professors. That's happening at small liberal arts colleges too. Um, our professors are also engaged in research and they're also um, studying and publishing their findings. Um, the big difference is, is since we don't have the PhD students at a small liberal arts college, the people working alongside the professors our undergraduate students, again, people like you, maybe in a year or two, um, would be working in those laboratories, um, making those discoveries and co-authoring those articles with the professors so that um, um, by the time you have a bachelor's degree, you've already had many of the experiences that at a larger university are reserved for, um, for the, the, graduate, the graduate students. So, um, and these aren't just, uh, you know, it's not uh, not like recitation laboratories. They're, they're things that you're, um, like real discoveries that you're going to be making. Just a couple of examples from, from Lewis and Clark. Um, we have uh, one of the, the leading experts in, in biomechanics studies geckos, the little uh, lizards, and um, fascinating, fascinated by how they are able to climb trees and stick um, to it and, and recognizing that there are potentially um, industrial implications for us, if we could understand how geckos use their feet to climb around. And, um, and the laboratory at Lewis and Clark has made some really groundbreaking discoveries in that, um, in that regard. Another laboratory with, run by chemists and biologists studies uh, spider venom and is making even pharmaceutical implications of, of the things that they're learning about the toxins that spiders use. So, um, so anyway, real um, applicable uh, discoveries and uh, research being done at small liberal arts colleges. Um, so, uh, of course, we did mention that that it's about educating you in your whole way and not just about career preparation, but um, like I said, career preparation is indeed very important, um, and that is something that we do and we think that we do very well, um, too. Um, in fact, liberal arts graduates or graduates from small liberal arts colleges um, tend to be admitted into graduate programs, that is, MBAs, master's degrees, PhD programs, a law school, um, at a much higher rate than people who get their undergraduate degrees at larger universities. So I think because of that personalized attention, you get um, an advantage. Um, you are more prepared and better equipped um, for those graduate programs. And, um, and our graduates do find jobs. If you survey at least the top uh, liberal arts colleges in the United States, you'll find that uh, nearly 100% of their graduates are employed um, or engaged in, in more further academic work um, immediately following uh, their undergraduate uh, college. So, um, uh, and because of our, our size, we also provide a lot of greater services, um, considering like the, the career services office that would be able to, um, to help guide you through the process of finding your first job and preparing your resume and learning how to interview. Um, those are our, our skills that we teach in addition to the academic courses too. Um, and, and professors end up being an incredible resource. The fact that you'll have um, a relationship with your professor, be on a perhaps first name basis with, with the professor, um, that means that they're gonna be able to be a, a more informal resource to you too, um, not just teaching you the subject you're studying, but, but mentoring you as you're, um, you're continuing through um, your academic uh, programs and, um, and finding your first job. Um, and lastly, I'll say that, again, I think attributable to the size of the college is um, the fact that um, that you you make uh, incredible, long-lasting, lifelong friendships um, at a small college. Those graduates, um, like you, um, spread themselves around the world, have successful careers, and then it ends up being a remarkable family-like network of, of alumni um, who support each other and support the the younger graduates from the college too as they embark on their their first careers. So um, even there in India, you'll be surprised to find um, once you once you start wearing your your Lewis and Clark sweatshirt or um, these other small college sweatshirts, Beloit, uh, Knox, um, Wheaton, um, you learn that uh, that there's lots of people around you that that show up that that have uh, studied at those colleges or know of those colleges. So um, uh, I think I'll probably end it there. We're about out of time.